Hi guys, welcome to our workplace health and safety meeting of the month. Um, today is Sean and Anna with us. How are you guys? Good? That's good. Thank you guys for meeting me today. Today is the 22nd of September. Uh, please, Sean, are you taking the minutes today? Thank you. So please state the date and state location at the Australian Institute of Fitness. Um, attendees will be me, Camila Arboleda, Sean, and Anna Smith. Today we're going to talk about risk assessment and evaluation. So just risk management in general in our gym. Uh, the start time is 11.50 a.m. So welcome everyone to the meeting again. Um, the primary reason for this meeting is to review the risk assessment and evaluation conducted last week and any further work and health, uh, work health and safety concerns that we have about the gym. Um, so first of all, did you receive the minutes from last week? I'm uh, sorry, from last month? Yes, do you have any changes that you want to make? Okay, that's really good. Perfect. So, okay, so talking about the inspection that we had last week, uh, everything looked pretty good. However, we did find three issues or hazards that we should properly discuss and further assess. So the first one was the amount of water drops that are left by the clients going from the pool to the bathroom and the mopping in the area is just happening in the mornings and at night so during the days we have a high risk there of water people sleeping on it and um, more then the second one is the size of our current plate rack so the plates are clearly overflowing the rack we only have one rack and well first of all it's overflowing and Apart from that, when there's no more space, people, instead of putting the plates in a safe place, they're just laying them around um, unattended, which is obviously a hazard. And the last one was that we asked Sam from reception if he knew how to identify and control a hazard, and he had no idea what we were talking about. So that's a huge risk because he's our main uh, front desk, and we need him to be on top of these kind of things, right? So by implementing the risk control matrix, we will go through a risk assessment and evaluation of each hazard just to come up with some ideas of how likely, how severe, and what measures should be put in place to minimize the risks, right? So to start with it, I would like to ask Anna, no, Sean, let's start with Sean. Sean, are you there? I'd like you to please tell us um, how do you see the first risk? Okay, so the risk assessment for this particular hazard where the plates are overflowing the plate rack, mm -hmm. uh, rock, I would say that the severity of this hazard if it was to become an accident, it will be between a three and a four. Mm -hmm. Since um, if the plates fall off the rack, it will cause a major injury. Um, somewhere with, between um, tear a wound to a broken bone or an uh, internal injury in a client or a coach. Mm -hmm. The likelihood... I would say it's unlikely. Um, even though the plates are overflowing the rack, um, still people can see that the rack can't handle more plates and they will just um, leave them laying around, which would be a less risk than if they fall of the actual rack. So combining a, these two um numbers we will get that the risk is between a 6m to an 8s so it can go from 
moderate to significant, depending on the consequences of the actual hazard becoming a incident. Okay, I like that. Yes. Um, the likelihood, I'll still think it can be a bit more than unlikely, but yes, it's true. People can see the plates, right? Sometimes you're on your phone, you are distracted, you are looking at the machine you're going to instead of looking to the floor and just, you know, tripped on a plate that it's unproperly placed. So I would think that the likelihood, I can move it to a moderate, to be honest, and is a significant um, risk because... It can cause a major injury if people fall on it. So, unlikely to moderate, I would say. Okay, and Sean, do you have any other solutions um, that you think you can put in place to minimize or eliminate this hazard? Okay, so the... Sorry, what was that? A bit of technical well, issues. some of the solutions that I would think will help alleviate this hazard or this risk will be for starters, and I think the biggest investment will be to buy a bigger rack. Mm -hmm. um, it would be the first solution that comes to mind. But since it can be an expensive investment, another solution can be to maybe allocate an area in the gym where people can put the plates that do not fit in the rack. This would require, um, this will be substituting one risk with a, with a lesser risk. However, it would require um, actually building a barrier that people can see that plates will go in that area and they won't cross to that area, walk around that area, and it will require training um, the coaches and people as well so they know where to put the plates so the plates are not laying around and not to overflow the current rack so it doesn't represent a hazard in the gym. That's right. Um, thank you, Sean. I think this two solutions are uh, very likely to be implemented in the gym. Buying a new rack can take a bit of time due to the money and the management procedures that have to take place before acquiring such a big um, machinery, but it can be done in the long term. And for the short term solution, we go through a substituting the hazard to a lesser hazard, which will be to allocate a place for the plates. That's a really good one. Now, Anna, I would like you to evaluate the second hazard, which is the water that is being dropped from the pool to the bathroom. Anna, are you there? For water driven from the pool to the bathroom, I would say it represents a severity from two to three, so somewhere from minor to moderate. Um, this means it would mean it would need first aid treatment for a minor medical um, injury, something that it's not too big. Someone sleeps on it. Uh, it can cause a wound. It can cause. Um, Back pain, however, it, it can escalate pretty quick and require actual medical treatment. That's why I put the three as well, because it might require some sort of medical intervention. Uh, for the likelihood, I would say moderate, because um, definitely if there's water on the floor, it's very likely that people are going to sleep on it. So combining these two... Um, evaluations, the risk assessment will come to 
a 6M to an I test, so moderate to significant, um, B9 is quite high because the likelihood of it happening is higher than the previous high that we analyzed. So people can't see the water and it's very easy to sleep on it. So yes, it, it is a very significant risk that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anna. I totally agree with you. It's something that needs to be addressed um, as quick as possible because, uh, um, well, fortunately, we haven't had an accident yet, but it's a pretty um, severe hazard that we have to deal with. Um, do you have any solutions that we can apply? Hello, Anna? Well, to alleviate this risk or eliminate it completely, we can set up a cleaning schedule that runs every single hour. So every hour, someone has to come and mop the path from the pool to the bathroom mm -hmm. to avoid any incidents. This schedule should be revised every single day by the manager make sure people are complying and evaluate if it needs to be done more regularly um, in case water is becoming the risk is not being more uh, properly or people are still seeing it as a hazard so yeah first set up a schedule and then Evaluate this schedule at least once a week to see if an hour is not enough and maybe we can implement um, mopping every half an hour, every 15 minutes, as much as necessary, as many times as necessary. Thank you, Anna. Yes, at the moment we have a cleaning schedule in place, so you guys should be aware of it. However, this cleaning schedule is only for the mornings and the afternoons, like at night when we close the gym, which makes very difficult to evaluate what's going on throughout the day, which is a long time, right? So I like that. I like that. We are going to add specially mopping uh, more regularly throughout the day. So I'm going to start with an hour. We're going to start implementing an hour and then in the next meeting we can evaluate if this has been enough or if we should add more mopping um, tasks to the schedule. So that will be um, the weight area that we just um, identified. There's a hazard there. The pool area and the last one will be the reception where Sam didn't know what a hazard was. So definitely we have to talk to Sam about it. It's a severe risk. The fact that he doesn't know how to identify it and control a hazard, it's, I think it will be the biggest hazard, right? Because we have to be able, as um, Jim, as an employer, um, and all the employees should be um, aware and educated in what a hazard is and how to um, work with it, how to evaluate it, first of all, how to report it, and then how to manage it. So we're gonna definitely train the staff reception in workplace health and safety. That's, uh, we already agreed, and we're gonna do it um, before the next meeting. So guys, I just want you to remind, I just wanted to remind you that the purpose of um, the key elements of our risk management standards, um, we always do a risk assessment because it provides a framework for effective risk, risk management. Um, obviously, the key elements that are included in a risk assessment are assessing the gym's legal liability. So we need to know what legal implications would happen if a hazard becomes an incident. Then we develop a risk management strategy, which is what we're doing right now, strategies to overcome that hazard. Then we implement the strategies that we just came up with. 
And after implementing them and giving it a bit of time to see if they work, we come back and we evaluate if the management plan put in place is actually working. Why do we have to do this? Why the gym is required to manage a risk? Well, it comes from legislatively and regulatory um, laws that are in place. So the Work Health and Safety Act in Queensland from 2011 states that all employees have a legal duty of care to ensure safety of clients and staff. So that's you and me. And besides, duty of care also states that the gym, as an employer, must ensure that there are no risks or hazards that can affect anyone on the premises. That it's not only clients and coaches, but also visitors, people that come to uh, fix a machine, etc. And what are the auditing requirements of our facility regarding risk management? Well, for the fitness industry, policies and procedures must be put in place to ensure that emergency procedures and work health and safety responsibilities are conducted. This includes cleaning and maintaining schedules, which we have talked about it, keeping reports and records on risk assessment and management and incidents and evaluating them and keeping record of all of this just to, if we are ordered, we can show that we are assessing risks, we are always in control of hazards, and we have a um, plan in place to deal with them and to improve every single day. Okay, guys. Um, thank you so much for all your help. Keep up the hard work. Um, even identifying and controlling risks in the gym. Um, please, Sean, state that the meeting was concluded at 12.07. Um, thank you so much, guys, for helping me, and I'll see you guys in the next meeting. Thank you.